All right, guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over an article, or shall I say a rant, written by a woman titled, Why Everyone Needs to Stop Telling Me I'm Too Picky. And guys, this story, this rant, whatever you want to call it, is written by a woman. She's in her 30s and basically is complaining because of all the people telling her, the people in her life telling her that she's too picky when it comes to guys and dating and all that. And I do articles like this periodically just to show you my point of how things are out there. Because after years and years of the feminist movement telling women that they're worth everything and can have everything and deserve everything, and of course, a never-ending supply of guys complimenting and validating women in all different types of ways, you can see how the mindset has shifted over the years. And so now, and for you guys, there's, there's plenty of you that watch me that are dating and relationships and pick up and hook up and all that. This is something you guys deal with. I deal with it. Okay. And it's a real pain in the ass. But the thing is, it's definitely funny because these same women that are so picky about the stupidest little things, they're the ones that end up by the time they're in their thirties and definitely their forties, complaining that they're alone, that they never got to get married or have children, have a family. And instead of just owning up to the fact that, yeah, you know, I was too picky and it was ridiculous and all that, they blame guys. They blame guys because there aren't any good men out there or there's no gentleman or chivalry is dead. It's easier to assign blame on somebody else than take ownership of that. And this woman goes into this whole stupid rant. And before I get into it, guys, I got to say one thing. Let me make, a little, make this clear. It's one thing to have certain deal-breaking standards with regards to someone that you choose to be with versus just being psychotically picky. And to give you an example, like let's just say you have a woman who's religious. Her religious faith is important to her. She goes to church every Sunday. Things, And she wants a guy, obviously, that, that is like her in that regard because it's not going to work. If she's very religious and she goes to church every Sunday and it's really important to her, it's not going to work if she's with a guy who's an atheist or says it's all a bunch of crap, okay? It's just not going to work. So that's an understandable deal maker, uh, deal breaker in a situation where she needs to have that for a guy and otherwise if she doesn't meet a guy like that, it's not going to work. Okay, fair enough. Or let's just say she's really into health and fitness, okay? She's into working out at the gym multiple times a week. Her diet's really clean, really good. Outdoor activities like biking or hiking or whatever. Very fit lifestyle. And a woman would want a guy equally like that. Well, that's important too because obviously that's a huge part of her life. Keeps, keeps her very healthy in shape. So she wants a guy that's like that as well because it's not going to work with a guy who's overweight, sits on his ass all day watching sports, drinking beer. Opposites do attract, but generally it's opposite personalities attract, but similar interests, okay, and lifestyles. So she would need a guy that's into that. That's understandable as well as a deal breaker if the guy isn't into that. What's picky would be is if the same woman who wanted those two things wants a guy who's six feet tall and makes a six-figure salary, $100,000 a year and up, and meets a guy that is religious, goes to church every week, is into health and fitness, clean eating, all that, but happens to be five foot eleven and makes 92000 a year. And she says, eh, next, because of that, right? That's being psycho picky, and you guys know there are plenty of women out there that are that fucking shallow, that picky. Even though it would be hard to find a guy that's, in this day and age, really religious, church every Sunday, had those values, and into fitness and health and being very serious about that. And, but she won't give him the time of day because he's five foot 11, one inch shorter than what she wants for her perfect man, and makes eight grand less than, than what is wanted for her perfect man. That's being psychotically picky, but that's what you have in this day and age. So I'm going to get into this here and you'll see more what I'm talking about with regards to her rant. She starts out saying, Please don't assume you know what my standards are simply because I'm single and you are not. That opening sentence there kind of says it all about her character and personality. The other night during ketchup drinks with with a few close friends, they unsurprisingly asked about my dating life. I mentioned I recently had two first dates, two guys who seemed perfectly fine as humans, but whom I just didn't feel like seeing again, even though both followed up. I always had a three-date rule, one friend said to me, knowingly, it can't take that long to get to know someone. If I hadn't given Eric another, if I had, hadn't given Eric another chance, we definitely would have ha- ended up together, added another. These are her friends talking to her. 
who met her now husband in college and was friends with him for years. A situation slightly different from 30-something me going out to dinner with the men I've messaged on dating sites. A few weeks before that, I went out with a different partnered friend and we gossiped a bit about our mutual single amigas. I know you don't do this, but I just simply think she's too picky. My boyfriend having Bud announced, it's like no one's good enough for her. See? Plenty of women out there like this, guys. Okay? I know a ton of them. Okay? Because I have a lot of friends and I get together and go to gatherings and barbecues in the summer and parties and things like that. And so you get acquainted with friends of the friends of the friends, those type of deals. And there's so many women in their 30s and 40s and they sit around and talk about men and complain about the lack of good guys out there or some get drunk and cry because they haven't married yet or had kids. It's unbelievable. I mean, I know a bunch of women like this. And guess what? For their ages, 30s and 40s, they're good looking. And I knew some of them when they were 10 years younger in their early 30s. They were hot. They were nines, eights and nines. And I bet you when they're in their 20s, they were probably nines and tens. But they were so picky that here they are later in life. And guess what? Guys don't want them anymore. Okay, or guys do want them, but it's for one thing, and that's it because they've gotten past that point. Or the guys that actually would give them a chance and would be interested in them, they're too picky about it. You see, what I'm talking about at this point in their, life, in their 40s, these women want to get married and have kids and have a family and, and, and try to make it work in any way, and they're still freaking picky. And these are good guys, I've seen some of these guys, it's unbelievable. But that's how things are in this day and age goes on, I know she met, meant well, but my friend's words stung. I constantly hear variations on the idea of being too picky. Directed at myself and other single women, although the language tends to be softer. It took me a while to fall in love with my husband. You should give the guy a fair chance since he really likes, to, likes you. Hey, it's not every day you meet a smart, cute, successful guy like him. These are things that she hears. Some people are less subtle. Like my grandparents, asserting I won't always be young and pretty, and it's my responsibility to lock down a man now. And she says, yes, really. I know everyone's intentions are good, that they just want to see me happily partnered, but the message drives me and every uncoupled woman crazy. Here are three big reasons everyone needs to cool it with declaring my standards are too high. So here we go here. Number one, you're telling me not to trust my gut. Giving someone a chance is one thing, but I know what I want, and I know how I and I and how I want to feel. You're telling me I should force myself to spend more time with someone I don't feel comfortable with. Yeah, I don't think so. In fact, when I ignored all my instincts and tried that recently, the man wound up morphing into an entitled, scary lunatic. Maybe just maybe there's a very real reason I don't want to go out with certain dudes again. And whether that's because I'm getting creepy vibes or he reminds me of my ex or I'm just plain not feeling any sparks, I'm allowed to listen to and honor that. If Okay, so if she's out meeting some dude for the first time, and this goes for her or any other woman, and she gets vibes that, that she senses danger or that there's something creepy about him, that's one thing. But we know that's not it, guys. We know a lot of it is just a stupid crap. I, I know a girl... This is I, years ago. I heard this conversation. I was out with a bunch of friends, and we're all sitting around a bar having appetizers and drinks. And she was about 36, 37 years old. Okay, recently divorced. Her marriage lasted a whole three months because she found something wrong with him. No joke. And she is definitely looking for to get married, have kids, all that. And she was talking about a recent date she went on. I overheard this conversation, and the reason she didn't go out with a second date with the guy is when they were eating dinner. Upon Asking him how you like the food, he apparently said some part of the food was bland. That's it. Because he chose the word bland, that turned her off, and therefore she wasn't interested in him again. Maybe it's the way he said it, or who the hell knows, but the point is, she was just looking for a reason not to give the guy a chance. But also, knowing how psycho she is, it probably was the fact that he just said bland that turned her off. See what I'm talking about? But later that night, we're all bar hopping, right? And we were at this club, and she started talking to this guy because she's good looking for her age in her 30s. Damn good looking girl. And he was talking to her and everything, and I guess at some point, he asked her how old she was. And she said 36 or 37. And guess what happened? He walked away. 
just like that, because he wanted some. Because she looks a lot younger than she is, he wanted somebody younger. And then she came back, and she was moaning and groaning to the girls in the group, because there was a bunch of us. That guy just walked away because she he told she told him her age, and she got all upset about her age. And I'm thinking, well, I guess the the bland guy's looking pretty good about now. See what I'm talking about? The pickiness over one stupid word. But so this isn't just about like her, her gut sense. There's a sense of danger or something's wrong, but we know it's more than that. Come on. She's just making excuses. She goes on. Oh, also I eventually want kids. So wasting time on someone I'm not into is questionable advice. Well, there's a degree of how into, okay? If there's nothing in common you're not into, but if it's all these standards you got to meet and all this stuff that's being sold in movies and TV and songs, they're selling dreams. Movies and TVs, they're selling dreams to women. The songs on the radio, selling dreams. These romance novels, selling dreams. It's not reality. All right, number two. It implies I'm not deserving of epic love. Epic love. What I just say about the books, the novels, and the movies, and TVs, and songs selling dreams, right there. Epic love. I don't know anybody who has epic love. Okay, that's only in the fucking movies. Any of you guys know anybody that has epic love? Please comment in the comments section about epic love. How many people you know that have epic love? She says here, I love watching friends fall in love. I love the surprise, excited text from the bathroom and she says in a uh, quote, guys, I'm on a super good date. I love the big blushing smiles every time his name is mentioned. And I even love the cocoon period where your friend is constantly holed up with her new bow, emerging every once in a while with sparkly eyes and sex-mused hair. Okay, that's called the honeymoon period. That's called in the beginning when both the people, both parties don't know a lot about each other and they're exploring each other and getting to know each other and all that shit, okay? And the girl goes in with, very high hopes, and this this could be the one, and all that shit. That's not love. That's not epic love. That's infatuation. That's the romance. That's the honeymoon period. And guess what happens? Statistically, they're not going to last. Okay. Statistically, that same girl. So let's just say she marries that guy. They're not going to be together because statistically, they're going to divorce. Okay. And that goes away. That's not love. Okay. Falling in love is the best. She says with an exclamation point. And when it happened with my friends with friends my age, so often the fall is instant and forever. Forever, huh? I have news for you. What reality is she in? Maybe La La Land, because in reality, it ain't forever. They're engaged within a year. They're confident and glowy instead of hesitant and stressed out over every date, detail, and text. Not that it's totally smooth sailing from day one. Of course, but there's a beautiful smoothness when a grown-ass woman finds her person. And just being around that buzz is enough to give me a giddy contact high. Well, maybe that woman she's talking about or examples are friends of hers that are older and realize their clock's ticking, so they're giving guys a chance instead of putting some of their bullshit high crazy standards aside. Who knows? Here's what I'm getting at. When you tell me I'm too picky and to give whatever bro another chance, what you're saying is this. You got to fall head over heels, but I have to settle for someone who seems more or less acceptable. Now, please explain how that's fair. <laughs> you know, what's the saying? You can't ever, don't ever argue with a drunk or a fool. Right here. Number three, it suggests I don't know the difference between would be nice and non-negotiables. If you have a four-page long checklist of super specific qualities you're looking for in a mate, and she says in parentheses, plays guitar, banks six figures a year, has a close but not too clo close relationship with his mom, and you'll pass on anyone who doesn't tick every box, maybe you are pushing the extreme pickiness. Well, that's a lot of women in this day and age, particularly in, the, in their prime in their 20s. And I'm willing to bet you it's this woman regardless of what she's saying here. But single women, especially ones in their 30s who, like me, have plenty of dating and relationship experience, are generally looking for more broad qualities that make for a healthy relationship. Chemistry, communication skills, physical attraction, compatible senses of humor, and easy rapport. If I'm ending things with someone, it's not because he's not capital P perfect. It's because one or more of those crucial elements is missing. Please don't assume you know what my standards are simply because I'm single and you are not. 
okay, I don't know this woman, but guess what? Over the years, I've gotten to know a hell of a lot and a hell of a lot of experience and learned a hell of a lot about female nature and plenty of guys I know and stories I've read pretty much can hit the nail on the head that she's very much like the rest of them. Maybe I'm wrong, but I doubt it. And there's obviously a reason she's in her 30s and still single, okay? Any good-looking woman that is, I would say, honestly, a seven or a woman that's a seven or above in the looks department in her 20s can get a guy no problem, especially eight and above, okay? And a woman in her 30s, eight and above, no problem. Now, when the guy, when, when they're in their 30s, though, it won't be as easy naturally as the 20s, but there's still plenty of guys out there that would jump and grab with a woman that's an eight or above and marry in a heartbeat without thinking twice. But a lot of the guys that these same women want in their 30s because their standards are so high and they spent their 20s having guys chasing after them, they want the small percentage of guys. And those guys either A, never, ever, ever going to sell down and get married because they know better, or B, guys that have been kicked to the curb and not given the time of day by women like her are dating the 20-somethings. It's funny how that works out. She goes on, On a recent trip to Uganda, I met a fellow 30-something travel writer who had a boyfriend back home. He popped up in stories every now and then. But she had such a rich, interesting life. I didn't even learn her man's name until toward the end of the trip. She shared stories of kayaking with dolphins in New Zealand and hiking through the Amazon. One afternoon toward the end of our trip, we sat next to each other on a jeep bound for an indigenous African village. I brought the topic of dating, and she revealed that when she'd reached her late 30s and was still single, everyone seemed concerned about her boyfriendless status, except her. Her friend's quote is saying, People kept telling me I was being too picky. Gazing out over the rolling hills and jade-colored shrubs of Uganda's Kidepo Valley, but then I met Rich, and honestly, I'm so glad I waited. You'd expect this essay to have a cute wrap-up. Surprise, I held out until I met my new guy. And boy, am I relieved I didn't settle. Well, I'm still holding out. And I feel good about that. I'm meeting cool men, giving them a real chance. Really, lady? And keeping my radar out for a true connection. Maybe I am picky, but for me, it sure beats the hell out of being unhappy. She doesn't sound very happy to me. Call me crazy. It sounds very happy to me. In regards to the woman that she met when she was out in Africa seeing uh, uh, on safari, whatever the hell you want to call it. If that's true, that's a rare example. Okay. Can it happen? Sure. But all it takes is hearing that for women or people in general just to cling to one little story, the small percentage of what could happen and, and, and base all their hopes and dreams and all that shit on that. When in reality, it is, that's, the odds are it's not going to happen, okay? And so she's going to base it on what that lady she met in Africa told her, so she's holding out. And I guarantee you, give it a few more years, she's still single, she'll be one of these same women that's going to be writing an article talking about how there are no good men out there, and no men want to settle down, and poor her, woe is me, all that shit, which I've done stories on, I've done articles on, okay? But that's what's out there, guys. And so, like I said, I do things like, I do articles like this periodically because it's number one it's entertaining and i'm sure a lot of you guys are here for the entertainment in the comment section but also just to show you what it's like what's out there and what is coming with regards to soon we're gonna have an air of all these women who spent all these years because of feminism believing they're entitled to everything and thanks to all the dating apps and social media and all that stuff of men validating them that's always like swipe 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 and yet there's no good guys out there and blame it us because we don't want to settle, or we're not good enough, or whatever it happens to be. So, anyhow, guys, that's it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this, and be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.